going on, everybody? Happy welcome, New Year. Welcome back to The Juice. This is the first episode of 2024. That is right. Yep. That is right. Uh, did, you did release on YouTube. Was that video in the New Year or before? It was before, but the okay. title was Happy New Year. Okay. You filthy Just animals. making sure, making sure. You know, we said in that last episode we're going to kick this one off with a bang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are. We're going to jump right into it or we want to... We're going to kick the new year off with a... I mean, we got a little little hint right there. Yes. Uh, We were debating on this before we turned it on, whether we should tell y'all or just let him come on, and then it'll pop up in my little thing, his name. We might as well tell him. I want to insert some music. We forgot to ask him. We're going to ask him. Yeah. Can you see that pretty well? Yeah, yeah. That's where I put the little... Right there in that little wood spot. I don't know if you can see the... Oh, the the frogs? Yeah. Nah, probably not very good. Okay. Toad Thumper. Toad Thumper. We're, we're Tur- Toad Thumper Lures. That's that's who we're going to have on. We're going to have on one of the owners. One of the owners. Of Toad Thumper Lures. I think he's better well-known as a musician. Better well-known as a musician. Yeah. <laughs> For now. I mean, I think he's going to do great things. Yeah. Well, they already are. Yeah. Uh, But, so what? Bef- before we get to guests, should we, you know, kind of talk about what's going on here? I mean... Yeah. Oh, yeah. You talking about around here? I mean, tournament season is here. Tournament season is upon us. Actually, it starts tomorrow on Sam Rayburn for the MLF BFL. MLF BFL. Uh, Major League Fishing, Bass Fishing League. Yep. Uh, yep. That's how we always kick off Rayburn. It'll be a little bit of a crapshoot, I think. Uh, so the lake is extremely low, like we've mentioned probably a couple times on previous episodes. I'm not real sure how they're going to do weigh-in and stuff. I mean, there's going to be some dudes getting their feet wet tomorrow uh, on the bank. It's narrow where takeoff is. Yeah. But uh, getting up there to weigh your fish, though, dude, I mean. It's going to be a nightmare. We did get a new dock at the pavilion. I don't know if you noticed that. Oh, no, I haven't. We haven't launched down there. Mm -mm. Yep, new dock. Um, Not necessarily any more or less space, but, yeah, it's going to be tough. I think the weights are going to be tough. I know it's January. Big bags get caught in January, but – uh, there's a lot of big tournaments coming up, and I don't know where everyone is from here that listens, but Rayburn is, it's an animal. When January 1 kicks off, it's like every weekend up until June, there's a tournament, a big mm-hmm. tournament. Yeah. No, yeah, it's uh, it's a wild, wild west out there on Sam Rayburn. And, a lot of uh, pressure. Me and Shane are going to be sitting out for the BFL this weekend. We have came together as a team, made a business decision to sit out (laughs) for the BFL. Um, So, really, the main reason for that is uh, we can't catch them. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, Uh, we we can't just go fishing and and catch them. So, we're not going to fish it. And uh, we're going to let everybody have their fun tomorrow. No, man, you can't put that energy out in the universe like that. What do you mean? We can catch them. We're just, we can't. We're not catching them. We're choosing not to right now. Well, I hope you're right. I, I feel right. I feel decent about some tournaments we have upcoming. Uh, it's a new lake. We've had to yes, find some new stuff. Very new lake. I'm sure a lot of guys are probably experiencing that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, but what I was getting at is a lot of your guys, there's so many big tournaments. Uh, there's there's people like us. There's guys like us who are, are looking down the line and saying, well, you know, a BFL, as fun as it is, is not exactly the highest paying. No, out absolutely, there. it's not. No, it's you got not. champs that stepped up their game. Big, big payouts. Mm-hmm. Uh, bigger, better payouts. Contingency payouts. Um, and then Brandon Bell. Yeah, yeah, two big ones were out there back to back, pretty much. Uh, yeah. So those are your money makers. In yeah, and, and and look, tomorrow also is going to be kind of a crapshoot. They're not only the BFLs. We're talking boaters, co anglers. I don't know how many boats they're going to get. Probably a pretty good number. If I had to guess, BFLs usually draw pretty good. Uh, and there's a high school tournament going on tomorrow too out of DP's Jackson Texas, Hill, so yeah. that'll be a hundred probably. So it'll be a busy lake tomorrow. Not to mention all the people that are just there on the weekend. It's gonna be, you know, it'll be a fell if you've never fished one on Sam Rayburn uh, or any place that draws a lot of boats. Uh, it's an experience all in itself. So um, yeah, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, I think it's gonna be a <clears throat> very exciting tournament year on this lake and. Probably some of the other places um, pretty close to here, really all around the state in general. I think some of these team derbies are going to kick out really big bags this year. Yeah, so. yeah. there's a lot to fish this year, so you got to kind of pick your uh, pick your times to jump in, and this is one we're going to sit out. 
It, it kind of feels weird to sit out. Yeah, it really but. does. I think I've fished that first BFL for the past. I'm surprised you sat it out, honestly. I've done. I've sat it out before. Three or four years. And I will say this. I've done really well in that first one every year. Usually it's a good – usually it's a really good tournament for me to get the things kicked off. Um, man, I really – it's it's really good event to get the ball rolling in the year. It really is. <clears throat> but, you know, even last year, like, and in in really the couple years prior to that, you didn't have to necessarily – or I didn't have to necessarily go to, you know, some things that maybe have a – the potential to kick out bigger bags, and because always, 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 the BFL is usually the first weekend of Raymer. At least it has been for the past three or four years. And then you have some big, big team events coming up after that. So usually, some guys, some look, some guys like to go just try to win the thing. They'll go straight to their their stuff and win it. That's great. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, seriously, there's nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> but some guys will try to save the potential. I mean, because you can't save fish and say, "Well, I'm going to just." It sounds great, but you can't for sure know that you can save them and then go back and catch them <clears throat> or yeah. that nobody else has found them. But uh, this year was different. I think the biggest reason I'm sitting out of the BFL this year is because the past three years or so in that, that first event of the year, I was able to just go fishing yeah. and, and get bit and, and have fun with it. Uh, this year, that's not the case for me. So it, it could be different for everybody else fishing the BFL. That's perfectly fine. Good for y'all. Not for me. Like, I can't. I mean, it really has been a great event. I think I've talked 10, like, the past three years in that term. Like, it has been a really good year, yeah. like, getting it started, getting things going in the right direction. But I've been able to just go fishing. And this year, I, I'm just – I don't feel confident about just going fishing and uh, and getting a top 10. If I did, I would be fishing it, you know, and that's just how it is. Like, I can't – I'm pretty sure I can't do it. So, I'm not yeah. going to – I'm not going to do it. Because, you know, the BFLs are and everybody that fishes them. If you're not in that top, you're not getting paid any money. So, no, you got to be in the top five. Really. really top five. Yeah. Really got to win. I mean, yeah. So it's a, it's a weird, the BFL's it's a not weird. a money maker. It's a good tournament. You know, there's, it's a good avenue to get to the All American. There's, yeah, if you're you going to fish all it's of a good them. opportunity. It's good, it's good learning experience, you know, for the boater co angler yes. setup. But, uh, no, yep. it's always fun to kick off the year with a kind of a practice tournament, but we're not going <laughs> to do that this year. But so before we get our guests on, let me get your, let me get your weight guess. For the BFL mm-hmm. to win, to win, yeah, um, and you can say cut a check if you want. I don't even know what they're paying down to. Cut a check, probably eleven, ten, eleven uh, pounds. So that's tough, man. It's always tough to answer that one because well, you Raven, never yeah. know. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm thinking somewhere around that twenty three, twenty four. I'm right there with you. I said twenty two to twenty three. But it is Rayburn. Somebody could go and oh, somebody could easily catch heavy twenty. Oh, they could catch thirty. Yes, it could happen. But if, if they, they do, they're gonna walk. Oh yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna say twenty three, and I'm gonna say three bags over twenty. That's it. Three bags over twenty. Yeah, and I'll say twelve. Yeah, with the pressure. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with that. I'm good with those numbers. Yep, I'm good with those numbers. We'll see. We'll see. Yep. Be. We'll find out tomorrow, but. Man, I'm really excited about this guest. We uh, are we gonna tell him who it is or not? Yeah, right now. Sure. Okay. So we've already <laughs> we've already kind of alluded to the owner of Toe Thumper and a musician, and uh, so yeah, we're gonna have Cody Cannon on. Cody Cannon. Yep. With Whiskey Myers. Whiskey Myers. And we're gonna talk all things bass fishing, music. A little bit of everything, man. A little He's bit of be a cool everything. Going to be a cool, cool guest. Yeah, let's get him on. I need to, like, play a song right here. Yeah. Hello. Hey, man. What's up? Well, we appreciate you coming on. <laughs> yeah. Y'all can hear me? Yeah, yeah we, we can got hear you. you good, man. We got you. Well. Appreciate y'all having me. You bet. Well, did you throw down for uh, New Year's Eve? I was asleep uh, by about nine thirty. No, so, yeah. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I definitely was at nine thirty. Uh, but I was up at four. You know, like I went duck hunting. So uh, there you go. You know, I guess I got to at least see the sunrise. Yeah, well, the Sh- other probably Sh- better. Shane's made fun of me for uh, duck hunting this year. What do you think about that? That's kind of he's oh, like, man. man, he's like, I've never met a duck hunter that says. 
that the meat is just great or it tastes good. And I'm like, man, it's not all about that, man. Like, tell tell us why you like duck hunting, man. Um, man, it's just like anything. I just grew up on it. I mm. love it. I, I, I like I being you. out in the woods and out in nature. Um, you can make everything taste good, man. You just got to know how to cook. Right. <laughs> <laughs> For real. I mean, you really, people that say so. I mean, there's probably some real nasty stuff you probably couldn't make taste good, but I bet somebody could. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, for me, I've just never been a big duck hunter. I was making fun of Wyatt the last episode because he's kind of all in it. He's hard to get get a handle on when he's during <laughs> duck season. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, been rough this year. Oh, yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what I was going to, that's what I was going to tell. That's what I was about to say there. It's it's pretty tough on the Southern boys this year. Is it year. a water issue? There's not a lot of water no, in places? Well, it's, it's weather. We haven't gotten any cold weather. A lot of birds left up north. It's, it's tough on the Southern boys right now, so. Um, yeah, I mean. I, uh, my neighbor was uh, just got back from Whitefish, uh, Montana, which is way, way, way north. Yeah, that's way up there. Right by, up by Glacier. And uh, it was like 40-something degrees, and there was ducks everywhere. Yep. Dang. Like, wow. Yep, that's a problem. <laughs> like, <"Look>, <laughs> yeah. They're still up there, brother. It's they ain't down here. 1,500 miles away from here. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But so, it is what it is. so you like duck hunting or bass fishing better? Oh, uh, fishing, man. That's that's probably my first love of the outdoors. That's Definitely awesome. Bass. So did you grow up bass fishing or just doing all kinds of fishing? Yeah, mainly. I mean, really all kinds, but I always gravitated towards uh, bass fishing more. But, yeah, I grew up fishing and hunting, you know. I being kind of from, You know, being from the country, a lot, most kids were like that, you know. Right. Where so were you? Uh, stuff like that. Where, where, are, where exactly are you from in uh, – East Texas, Palestine, yeah, it, right? I'm from. I'm actually from Natchez. Natchez. Okay, got you. Yeah, got you. Okay, which is just right outside of Palestine. That's okay. In okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, did you grow up doing any tournaments or anything like that, or just all fun fishing? No, nah, we was poor, man. We had no boat. Came <laughs> <laughs> for no damn boat. Uh, no, nah, I haven't done much. I did just one tournament. I won it. Uh, but that's not, I'm not saying I'm good or anything. I just want it. Uh, but no, nah, I, I never um, wanted to really, especially now, like, I'm super competitive, right? Mm -hmm. So if I was to fish tournaments, I don't think I would, it would take, like, some of the beauty and enjoyment. It's such a pastime thing for me, you know? Yeah. And it's like a place for me. And I, and I, I, I just had no interest in that at all because I would be, like, just, like, I would have to win, you know? Yeah, and no, then we I get that. Obsessed and, and, which I'm sure most people that fish tournaments are like that, but I couldn't be like that dude that's like, yeah, ha-ha, let's go. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it would, it would take some of the, uh, like, you know, just that release that it is for me, kind of to get away from everything. Mm -hmm. uh, it would take that away. So I'm not going to be fishing no tournaments, man. Yeah, I get that. No, I get that a bunch. It's yeah. actually smart because I – I commonly refer to us as idiots for tournament fishing because it's honestly it's a stupid thing to chase. It's spend a bunch of I, money. Right. So the one I fished, I had. I mean, it was amazing. It was super fun, but it's yeah. just like, yeah, you it's know a, what I mean? Yeah, oh, no, yeah, no, I get it. You know, you want to win, and you're not just out there just having a good time. It definitely consumes you, man. It's like a dark hole. You open up that door, you just, especially if you're competitive, like you said, you are. You're never coming back. Yep. Yeah, and I'm e I'm easily consumed anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's cool. That's yeah. Cool. So when did but you... I enjoy it? I you know I follow. I, I like uh, watching other people do it. You know. So do you follow bass fishing? I mean, I know you. Uh, yeah. I know you had sure, man. some buddies. Ever since I was a little kid, man. Yeah. I've watched it on TV. Um. And yeah, I still get the mag. I still get Bass Masters magazine. <laughs> That's cool. I still get the magazine and everything. Man. So how cool. how'd you get hooked up with Lee? So I fished uh, back in the day a few times with Lee uh, through this dude that uh, this cat named David Reynolds used to own Hanks, uh, which was a bar we used to play up in um, McKinney, Texas, uh, and he fished Lake Fork a lot, and so. He, he knew Lee, and then that's kind of how I got hooked up with Lee was through David, and we became friends. Uh, 
shit pretty pretty long time ago now. I think that's pretty cool. Got you. I got you. So was that like a was Lee guiding at that time on Fork or what was? No, Lee wasn't even guiding yet. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what he was. I guess he had a job. I don't. He was he was guiding <laughs> after that. He wasn't guiding then. Okay. Oh dang, you've known him for got a you. real long time. Got then. you. For some reason, I thought y'all like knew each other when you were growing I, up. For some reason, I guess I was wrong. I, that. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that he wasn't guiding then. Okay. Got um, you. Yeah. Got you. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's on you, so I didn't know him growing up or anything like okay. that. Okay, I got you. Okay, got you. So that was that... Like young 20s, mid-20s when I met him. Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah. Got you, got you. At that time, did Lee did Lee, did Lee, Lee want to pursue the fishing deal, or did you know at that time, or did y'all even talk about that kind of stuff? Um, I never asked him anything like that, but got I you. remember being... The wind was like blowing like thirty, and we had no. You know, this is like before spot lock and all that, dude. He just <laughs> on the trolling motor, just casting like a, it was something silly, like a little bitty finesse worm riding right to the wind, you know, and like skipping it and crazy stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, hey man, this dude's good. You know, we we fish with people, and they just got like that something different about them. Mm-hmm, yeah. You know, they got that kind of the it thing. That's yeah. just a different level. And I remember that though very well, just fishing with him that first time of the day and being like, Yeah, this dude this dude's different than everybody else. Right. Yeah, no, he's he's legit for sure for sure. I mean, I'm super jealous. He's probably got the coolest sponsor in fishing, no doubt. I mean the whiskey Myers, I mean that's yeah. that is badass. <laughs> yeah, it is real badass. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's kind of a pretty cool thing. Yeah. 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 It's crazy how many people in the bass fishing space now listen to whiskey myers not that a lot didn't before but man there's some people that are new fans of whiskey myers because of that no doubt yeah for sure we never thought anything like that it was just like it was a cool way to spend like you know your marketing dollars that no other band was doing and it was like a friend you know you're supporting them too right yeah and um you know and we you know we knew that he had you know what it took and stuff like that and so it was all kind of one of those things it's like yeah you know you get some advertising and stuff but it was like a a lot of people thought that was really cool Mm -hmm. no i think it's super unique man but there's especially when he puts it on youtube videos i mean there's people probably listen to it like man who is that i I like that band but yeah uh, no it turned out real, real cool deal he actually messed with me, uh, so I texted him. I said, hey, man, you mind doing me a favor and you mind reaching out to Cody and see if he'd be willing to come on our little podcast here? And he, he didn't respond for like five minutes. He texted me back. He, he said no. And I kind of I took for a minute. I was like, damn, did he really say no? I was like, what an ass. Like, I figured, like, can't just, you know, maybe a little nicer way to say no. He's like, he said no. So he, then he, like, sent back. He's like, I'm just playing with you, man. He said he'd do it. Here, let me put you in contact. I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> I was kind of sad for a minute. I was like, no way. I thought it would be a cool guest. But well, we appreciate you doing it. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, thanks, man. Well, we want to talk a little about Toad Thumper as well. So Yeah, we got your frog sitting up here in front of the camera here. You got a couple Toad Thumper frogs straight from – Tackle Attic. Yeah. Tackle got Attic's tackle got a good attic. supply of Toad Thumper frogs right down the road here at Sam Raven. So, yeah. Yeah, they do. Yeah, everybody was kind of looking at me weird when I was walking out of, with frogs in January and water up <laughs> like 50 degrees. Like, what does this dude know that we don't know? Yeah. Right. Or he's yeah. terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what inspired you to start Toad Thumper? Um, I don't really know. It was just like, it was during COVID and, um, it just started messing with me, man. Almost like songs and stuff. It was just I had this this the idea for some different lure designs. I mean, I always like you know you like draw little pictures when you're young or something like little lures and things like that. Um, you know, and like the decoys, weird stuff like that. When I was young and had these ideas, but you know, I never pursued that or anything. So maybe it was just in the back of my mind. Uh. I don't know, man. It just started messing with me. I couldn't sleep. I was thinking about my lure design for some reason. And um, I hit my buddy up, who's now my partner, on it because he knew some people in the industry. And I was just wanted to maybe design some stuff for, like, other companies, like, for free. Like, I was like, you know, just to do it, just to say I did it. There you go. Um, 
talk about it. I don't need my name on it or anything like that. I just want to do it and see if, you know, that's why I'd be like, man, I made that one day, you know? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that is cool. Uh, and he was just kind of like, nah, the hell with that. We'll just make our own company. And I was like, okay. I was like, you know what you're doing? <laughs> he was like, no. He was like, you know what you're doing? I was like, absolutely not. And so uh, we set out into the abyss. Into the, and you started with probably one of the hardest lures to make, a frog. Yeah, it's not an easy one. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't smart. Um, <laughs> it took a long time to get that thing right, man. Did it? Yeah. Um, of trial and error. Like, I, I knew the stuff I was going for from the start. Um, but just it was just little things, you know? To, yeah. Like, you know, our hook placement where it was was always there, but then you had, like, other things in design that would make it not work and, and just a lot of little things that took man a long time, probably a year and a half or two years of designing. Uh and just kinda getting a prototype, redoing it and stuff like that. Yeah. Um the concept didn't change that much. Um, I got but you. just getting everything working. So yeah, that was actually a, a really hard day to uh start with. Yeah. I didn't know I didn't know anything about it. So ignorance is bliss, man. Yeah, I know the silicone is uh is pretty hard to to get the right kind of texture, softness, hardness. You know, as far yeah, as- it is. You can mess with that. That that's probably, this part is kind of like a unicorn on that deal. And I don't know some of it with the body design too. You know how you can make it feel softer and compress easier than what the material actually is. Mm-hmm. But I don't know how we got that frog so soft and so durable. Right. I kind of, um, but it was kind of one of those things that was like, whoa, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I had to get both of them because it, usually it's a lot of give and take. Um, you know, the softer you, always the softer you make something, that your durability is going to go down, right? Yeah, right, so, right, right, right. So it's, it's kind of a balance of those. Um, and we did some things in the design, like not having, like a flat back going down to a V and stuff like that, because that'll make it real rigid to kind of help with that. Yeah. Um, but in the end, sometimes, you know, it's better to be lucky than good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, I've heard really good things um, about it. You know, I haven't had a chance to throw one yet, but we, like I said, we jacked a couple from, from tackle. Like I told them I'd bring them back, but maybe I won't. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's <laughs> legit. <laughs> It's a legit, man. It's a good frog, man. It's uh, the action's great. The hookup ratio is amazing. It doesn't take on water, and it's durable, which is just kind of silly, you know? Yeah. Right, right. Really, really great all around frog. I was very, very pleased. I remember when I got the first prototype, um, because it was very, very similar to what it is now, and I threw it out there, and I started walking it, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Because I didn't even know. <laughs> You're just like reading like kind of concepts of, you know, little, you know, basically engineering things you can do to, you know, just yeah. the concept of stuff walking, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. And I got it and I was like, holy shit. And yeah. I was like, oh my God, he's walking great. And boom, uh, I caught a fish. Boom, got the hook. Hell yeah, man. This is great. And I reeled it in and the frog was completely destroyed. Oh, no. <laughs> And I was like, ah, so back to the drawing board. Back so that happened a bunch of times. And I get it back, you know, it's like, oh, this is great. And then boom, something else happened. So it took, it took a couple times, man, maybe four or five different renditions of it. Yeah, well, props for staying in. Like yeah, I said, man, you, that had to have been so rewarding when you finally got it right. Like, that had to have been, like, a really rewarding thing. I bet. Yeah, and you still don't know, and you're, you're trying to test it, you know, and I'm touring and stuff, and I know that we, we need to – release it pretty soon and, and you know as things still come down to the nail you know it's kind of like anything you know yeah. you have it's not as like casual as people think um you kind of have deadlines even though the deadlines sometimes you make for yourself yeah but i remember getting them and, and knowing like okay it's gonna be dialed in and so i was like man i gotta go to a private lake where i can catch like 100 fish you yeah. know really put it through the so i went because i was still worried because a lot of the issues I was having was a durability thing, which there are no durability issues with this frog anymore. But mm-hmm. that was like the last thing I was fixing and fixing, and I was reinforcing things. And I remember uh, 
catching some fish, and I was like, cool, it's, it's working. I was like, well, I need to catch a bunch. And I went to a private lake, and I caught like 70 bass and two grinnels. <laughs> Grinnell tested. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and two, two big grinnels. And it was beat to hell, but it was still working. I fished with it the whole day. And I said, man, that's good enough for me. <laughs> Heck cool, yeah. Cool. So you guys also have was, some – go ahead. I was thinking, like, man, I probably should have made it a little softer so it would tear up easy. I'll <laughs> <laughs> yeah. say 70 fish and some grinnell on a frog is a lot. Yeah. You know? Dude, it was still – and it, it was beat up, you know, with that cuts and it stuff. And grinnell had peak, you know. But, hey, it still worked flawlessly, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. You guys also have some a couple soft plastics out there. Yeah, so we have a uh, the bad crawl, which is like your basic crawfish um, pattern, and then we have the crawgill, which is kind of the it's got more of a a bluegill profile, but still has that crawfish. Thing. It's more like a you know, like a beaver style like creature bait. It's just a little lighter. Um, yeah. yeah. So we had those two come out last year, and it was just. Just little things like the frog, man. When I come out with something, I I have like a a specific thing I'm going after, right? Like certain goals that Mm -hmm. I'm trying to achieve each design. Um, And so that's just kind of how at least I work. You know what I mean? There you go. And that'd be great, man. I love them. And then we have, uh, I I started working on a flipping jig, like when I started working on this frog and it's just now about to come out <laughs> just now getting out so of the jig like four years wow so, so you, got, uh, you got a jig coming you got anything else in the works more plastic yes i got a, like eight or ten things in the works but i don't know when they'll be done mm. but i know there will be um let's see there'll be a swim jig and a flipping jig come out um very soon and then uh, they're super super rad man great quality uh it's a custom gamagatsu hook that they built for me okay. um it's the only one it's uh super rad man the hookup ratio on it's really good um it, to be so big it penetrates so easy like it's, it's just really really cool mm-hmm. um and then uh I have like a finesse worm that I'm that I'm that I'm almost done now. So I wanted a worm that I could use for like everything, and it would be good, which is really hard. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, you have to do different things, you know, because the different properties for a, a drop shot worm, are different properties for a wacky worm, and yeah. a and a shaky head, right? If you want them to all excel at things. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted this worm to be good at everything, um, and and it is, <laughs> which is really cool. Yeah. Um, which it was just kind of messing with the design and stuff. Uh, which that's going to be coming out. I bet that'll come out this spring. And then I have a different crawl uh, coming out probably this spring. And um, I think that's it this spring. I have a lot of swim baits, bigger swim baits and glide baits I've been working oh, wow. on. There but the, uh, man, it's hard. The glide bait thing's really, really hard. <laughs> yeah, I can only imagine. Really to get like a like the because I want it to be like that slow wide glide, like you, like not the choppy stuff. You, you know, because I just make them for me, right? Yeah. I just want to make stuff I dig, and and I like that that the big slow lumbering glide. Um, it just puts them in a trance, and to get the sink rate right and everything on something that's a you know an, an ABF lure is like excruciatingly hard. Yeah. Like, mind blowing all the stuff you have to do um and how much like a, even a big a big lure like you'll change like the size of a split ring or a hook and it'll make it sink like a rock or float and so you have like these errors in your um like production that you have to account for and the different prototypes in production like it's, it's kind of hard dude <laughs> uh, yeah man so i've been working on that thing for like a year and a half and i don't know it'll probably come out next year <laughs> man that's uh that's really cool, man. Like you, you're really like it's it's really he's cool. into it. He's, he's very hell. passionate about yeah. it. I mean, I'm learning stuff here, no doubt. I from, mean, uh, from you, that's that's really cool, man. To uh, to, yeah. to know all that, I don't think a lot of people no man, know that's that. That's some tech uh, talk there for sure. Yeah, that's this is the juice right yeah, now. Yeah, he's, <laughs> yeah, he's spilling it all out. So, what's your favorite glide that you throw now? Uh. That um my buddy uh Tater Hog, you know him? 
tater hogs. I don't think I know. Sounds that. familiar. Hog, hog, um, I think the baits are tater hogs, right? Is it? I think, yeah, the hog father. Hog farmer? Is that no, it? The hog father. Nope. I know what he's talking about. Oh, okay, the hog father. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's a super, super good glad bait, man. Oh, yeah. He sent me one. It's amazing. I mean, it's like a hand done, like a, you know, high yeah, dollar yeah. uh, resin glide bait. Um, but that's the favorite one that I have now. It's super cool, man. Cool. It was the one um, when they were at Fork. Um, Chris Dane was throwing in a lot. Okay. He made that, it was like a big gizzard shad one. Got you. Yeah. Got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need to check them out. I'm not a big glide bait guy, but I'm trying to get into it. I'm trying. I feel stupid when I throw one. I got no idea what that bait's doing. I'm a <laughs> terrible big bait guy. Man, uh, Lee got me into them, honestly. Like, yeah. I was kind of like, you kind of scared to throw it. Or you don't have the patience, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. To throw it um, until, you, until you figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, you know, um. And then I would go fishing with him, and we would just, you know, he said, oh, we just, we're just throwing big baits. That's what, you know, when I was texting back in the day when we fish, I'd just say, big bait, question mark, you know? And so we were just throwing <laughs> big baits, and that kind of got me obsessed with it because I've seen the power of the big bait. Oh, yeah. it's got um, some serious draw him, power. I don't think there's a bait out there that has more. Yeah. I mean, it's... That, like the big line throughs. Um, yeah. I love a big we line were, through. We were throwing like 316s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rising suns. That, yeah, and they got a a really really good glide bait, but I can't ever find one uh, mm-hmm. called Work. But we were throwing those, with, and then they're really really good quality stuff, um, and catch real real big fish, you know. So it's fun to catch big fish. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, on big baits. No. <laughs> hey, the funny thing about uh, a glide bait is, uh, which I see a lot of from having to test like prototypes and stuff. Is uh, and you know you're trying to get in like real clear water areas, and you don't really necessarily want to catch fish when you're prototyping because they'll fall apart. Um, but you you throw that glide bait out there, and like every fish in like the lake comes up and looks at it. You'll like be reeling it in, and there'll be like 15 bluegill and like 18 shad behind it. It's funny, man. Yeah, they definitely yeah, they come put, out. Yeah, they put fish in tramps. No, I want to get I want to get better at it for sure. I. Just never been good at it. But right, uh, so right. you're working on a big line through as well? Yeah. Yeah. It's not gonna be super big. Um but I kinda I'm working on it now. I like to always start out with these like weird hard concepts that don't exist and then I figure out um by trial and error there's a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to figure out how to make it work. So I start like dumbing it down, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. but that one's uh It'll look super cool in the water, but it'll be, um, I'm trying to do some stuff that, that hasn't been done before. I don't know. I don't think I can do it. I'm not sure. It's, it's um, hard, man. And I talk about it like, you know what I mean? Cause I might be able to pull it off and it'll take me longer than somebody else. But, um, I don't know. I mean, it swims really good. I'm just trying to do a lot of extra stuff. Probably isn't important, yeah. but it's important. Well, I mean, <laughs> so I'll always start with this crazy idea and then. I'll kind of make it, you know what I mean? Get it right. Yeah. But, well, you should stick to that, man. If you're doing something different than anybody else. And I mean, that's why dude, people I, are going to buy it. I've had like five or six baits that like I tried that like don't exist yet. And then they like don't work at all. And I just have to like start over and go something else. <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool though, man. Yeah. yeah. Really cool. I don't, I don't but yeah. Oh, I like, uh, I wouldn't say it's, fun for me it's kind of a torment thing it's like writing songs and then it's like a thought somehow find a weird piece in the torment of creativity mm. <laughs> yeah no doubt well speaking of songs we were talking about this before we started recording is frogman about frog fishing or is it about <laughs> navy seals <laughs> i'm gonna go with i my guess was the seals but let's see yeah yeah so it's about uh some of my buddies that were Navy SEAL. I got you. Uh, yeah. I got you. Which is re- really cool. We started, um, you know the Black Crows are? Uh-huh. Yeah, super, yeah. super. One of my favorites ever. Well, I um, I wrote that song with Rich Robinson and the Black Crows. And it, it actually kind of, that song started out as something else. And then we said this line that kind of gave it like a, a military type vibe like one line in the song we were halfway done with the song it was a completely different song 
And uh, I said, oh, man, I got an idea because I've been hanging out, you know, with them a lot and stuff. Yeah. Oh, I got an idea. I said, but I got to make sure it's okay to do it. You know what I'm saying? And so I uh, text them and kind of told them kind of the vibe of the song and stuff. I was like, you know, is this, is this cool? Is this respectful? You know? And uh, they were like, hell yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. And they, uh, they like sent me their creed, which is like the bare knuckle spider and the UDT till diver and all those lines. Yeah. That's yeah. from their life. I took that up and they texted to me and they're like, put some this stuff in it. So, that's badass. That's a bad yeah. ass song. Dude, you, me and my buddies talk about this all the time. Like, yeah. That's the thing about y'all, man. It's like everyone's a banger. Like, because we listen to y'all's music. Like, I mean, it's huge around. I'm sure it's big in general, but around here, dude, like, this is who we listen to, you know? And like, every dang song's a banger. Me and my buddies talk about that all the time. It's like, they don't make one that's not a banger. If, if you pull up my Amazon music right now, my default station is Whiskey Myers Radio. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Right. So. Yeah. We, all went, we were never into like singles and stuff and like EPs, you know? Yeah, like, we yeah. always. Like, that was, like, a fast a little bit, and it might still be, I don't know, because I'm kind of unplugged from everything, but, like, we always wanted to make full-length albums that, like, because there's something about an album that, like, it's almost like a picture or something, you know, of, of a certain era and time that yeah. you wrote it, you know, like a whole complete story, mm. but you wouldn't want to, like, fill a book with, like, two chapters in it. Right. Yeah, so, no, I get that. We, we always really wanted to make, like, good full-length albums. Yeah, no, and and you do. I mean, I've been listening to you guys for a lot longer than White has. White's a little younger, but uh, you know who the Black Crows are, White? Not no, to call not, you out. I'm not, not familiar. familiar. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not familiar. Yeah, I, when you said yes, I was like, yeah, I'm not familiar. Well, I've, yeah, I got, I got 10 years on you, so. Yeah, I'm a little <laughs> younger. Do you, uh, let's see how long But you're going to go listen to the Black Crows. I, I will now. Yeah, yeah. Did you? Yeah. How, how much did y'all play at Bonita Creek Hall in Nacogdoches? Hey, we used to play there all the time. Yeah. The day, dude. Yeah. So I watched you there when I was in school, uh, live a few times. I'm trying to remember what years that was. Probably 2014. Does that sound right? Or is that not long enough? Yeah. Um, we were probably been in about 2014. Yeah, man. We, <laughs> I, it, we, we, would, we would stay at that hotel. I can't even remember. The, the Fredonia, name of maybe? It. Yep, the you, Fredonia. Yeah. Right? And this was before we were in a bus, maybe. I can't remember, but the uh, Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile was at the uh, <laughs> hotel. And we tried like hell to get them, uh, the, the drivers to take us uh, to the show in the, uh, the Oscar Mayer Wiener. <laughs> no, the line was right there by the door. Yeah, so yeah. We were kidding. We pulled up in this. And they were down, but then they were like, I think they've been drinking beer or something. They're like, oh, we can't. You know, we can't drive it. Oh, man, that would have been so tried, cool. Yeah, we tried so hard to, to roll up in the Austin Mountain Winter Mobile, man. You should have jacked it. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Golly. Y'all used to pack Bonita out. I'm talking about it was rowdy in there when Whiskey Myers came. And I, yeah. It was like our favorite one. Like, hey, it's going to be one of them nights, boys. Y'all get ready. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was a good time, man. Yeah. Yeah, it is. That's awesome, man. Well, uh, we got some more bass fishing talk for you. So, are you uh, are you for or against forward facing sonar? What's your thoughts on that? I'm for it, man. Nice. I like it. Yeah, I'm not that great at it, but I mean, it damn sure helped me catch fish in a bind. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right, 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 right. Do you do you have it on your boat, or do you do you run? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. What do you What are you running? Yeah. yeah what do you run? Uh, for my lives. No, the whole, like the whole, the whole setup. Yeah. Oh, I have a 921, uh, the Elite, I think is what it's called. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Rockin' Phoenix. Uh, Phoenix. And then I have uh, Hummingbirds and a Garmin. Yep, there you that's, go. That's our setup there. Not chain anymore. <laughs> I, have, <laughs> I have two 12s at the, uh, the console, but mm. I think I'm going to go to 15. I, I thought I would like it, and I don't. Oh, okay, uh, I got you. It like, makes my eyes get too far apart. Oh, the two twelve. Maybe, maybe I'm like, maybe I'm inbred, you know, or something in my eyes. But. <laughs> yeah, oh man, because I run like you know on one side, yeah, you know, I'm running like graphing, and then maybe two D or graphing and two D and uh, down, and then side on one. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I'm, but then I find like it's like hard for me to look at all of it at the 
same time. So I'm actually they're ordering me uh, some stuff, and I'm gonna go uh, take it. I'm I'm, I'm gonna go to just one fifteen at the console. I think the Apex. I think Hummerbird makes an Apex nineteen, don't they? Mm-hmm. I'm sure, man. I probably deal with it. Yeah, yeah, I go I, with the uh, Helix 15. Yeah, Helix 15 is pretty good. But, I wouldn't get, get messed with Apex. <laughs> yeah, but that, see, I don't know. Um, I just noticed that, that that I didn't like it because it, like, hurt my eyes. Yeah, Got you. <clears throat> looking back and forth. Yeah, it was yeah. weird. I was wondering one screen, and, and it's big enough that you can see the stuff on there, I man. Got you. Got so you. then you're running a Garmin, Garmin 12 up front. Yeah, the 34, L S 34 or whatever. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Garmin's the best at four facing sonar. Yeah, that's just how Sorry. it is. That's just how it, it is. Do you run it, a bird up front too, a three sixty or anything? Yeah, yeah. Okay, got you. Yep. But that yeah, five scope silly, man. You can shit, you can see bubbles and stuff in the water when you throw your lower in there and you can oh. see their tail moving. And I'm not even no pro that's got it dialed in, you know what I'm saying? But I mean, even with my settings, it's just like, man, yeah. Golly, see what kind of fish it is. Yeah. That's legit. What is your home body of water? Would it be fork or no? Man, I, haven't fished, I don't think I fished fork last year. I think I fished it once. Um, the closest to my house would be uh, like Palestine. Uh, Lake Athens is very close. Okay, to I me. got you. But uh, I used to fish this lake called Lake Fairfield. Ah, that just but damn that lake, bad ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've heard some good things uh, about. It. Never got the chance to get on. I've heard great things about it. Didn't they close it? Yeah, I think. I went out I went out there last year. My first, not first cast, but my first fish of the year was like a nine pounder. Heck yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah. Yeah. Uh, is that Power Plant Lake? Yeah, I thought that's when they closed, like last year, this year, or something. This year or something? I don't know. Yeah, I, it was a Power Plant Lake when I was a kid. When I was a kid, it had like redfish in it and stuff. Oh, wow. Uh, but then I, they like shut the power plant down and maybe a bunch of fish died and like people stopped going out there for a long time. Mm. And then. People came back. It was like off the chain, dude. Like yeah. donk, they're full of hydrilla. Uh, that one was cool, but yeah, fork's probably an hour, hour and a half. Um, when I lived in Tyler, I used to fish fork a whole lot more. Uh, it was closer. Yeah, and I got kind of busy, but I try to get out there maybe one or two times a year now. But I used to fish a lot more back in the day. Right, right. Got you. <clears throat> got you. Yeah. So well, he, he's a fan of forward facing sonar. He, he's not against it. What about in tournaments? What do you think about forward facing sonar? Do you think it's still cool? You think it should still roll on? Um, I mean, I get like uh, it's kind of boring to watch. So I get what they're trying to do. They're probably they're trying to figure that out. You know how you can actually watch the screen and how all that right, would work. Right. But I mean, why not? I mean, why would you make the look? I mean, it's not illegal to fish. Yep. yep. You can look at them. And, and and I tell you what, you can look at them damn fish on your your sonar, but that don't mean you can catch them bitch just like a fish. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. No, no, you're right. <laughs> or and you know, there's there's count to that. I can go out there and you know throw that thing catch three, and you know somebody maybe like the Millican guy can go out there and catch fucking you know thirty. Some things. Yeah. Now thing to that is not a. So yeah, I'm all for it, man. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but you know, if they outlawed it, I'd be I, mean, I, I wouldn't care either. Yeah, yeah. It just kind of <laughs> is what it is. But no, I mean, that's just part of it, man. That's just uh, that's just how it is, man. That's the uh, technology. Yep, that's yeah. it. It's always advancing all the time. Yeah, you got to keep up with it. But you know what I mean? It's like, well, you're looking at them on a bed. Yeah. Yeah. No, so, I, I get it. Yep, I but, completely get it. And, Outlaw for fish and sonar, y'all, and not be a bed fish. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a good point. I yeah. like it. So, are you a uh, are you a bass fan or an MLF fan or both? You you're not. You only have a side. Um, I'm more of a bass fan just because I grew up sure. with it. You know what I mean? Special to me, the classic and stuff like oh, yeah. that. It's just, I mean, even when all that happened, I, I knew it didn't matter. I was still gonna watch. You know, bass. It's because I grew up with that. Like I said, I still get the magazine. Mm, yeah. You know, I, I remember that from when I was a little kid. So there's like a nostalgia aspect to that. But, uh, I mean, I don't I don't hate on Magic Lake fishing or nothing like that. That's not, you know, any of my business, really. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was just curious more on, like, the format, if you like the every fish count versus uh, versus five fish limit, now that they're going back to that in MLF. Five. Five big fish. Yeah. 
Bring the five that's biggest, the, baddest. I think one. that's the grassroots. You know, you know, yeah, listen like to you talk about nostalgic. it. Yeah, yeah. It's the grassroots that Bassmasters put into place a long time ago. I think that was um, Ray Scott's vision, mission to begin with. I really. Dude, the classic you know is what I mean? everything. Yeah. I mean, the classic is just. And I'm sure, silly question, but you've been to a classic, right? Yeah, I've been to, yeah, like, I've been to the last four, probably. I mean, nice. And they have a booth and stuff there, so I'll be there every year. Oh, there you go. Okay. It's cool. uh, it's badass. magical, man. I mean, it's it's a cool, even if it's, you're not in it, just to be there. Yeah. Yeah, I like the five. It's like, um, it's, whole, it's, it's harder to catch five big fish than a whole bunch of little ones. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> it's way harder. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. That's been the allure of, of the tournament fishing world for ever until recently, you yeah. know, until it, MLS stepped in there. Big fish are cool. You know, like if I'm fishing, uh, like I said, I just fun fish and stuff. Uh, it's just a, kind of a break for me, you know. But if I'm going out there and I'm just like whacking a bunch of dinks, I like to do something else. Yeah. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm like, hey, I'm going to go do something really. I'm going to go chunk a big swim bait at the dam and just not catch anything you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah. yeah well when you do hook one you catch one it's you're freaking jacked compared to yeah. catching a bunch of dang two yeah. pounders yeah but that's kind of just way that i mean i i dig trying to catch big fish yeah for sure yep no doubt man well so what is uh what's what's the future look like for you, you still y'all still putting out a bunch of music and all that yeah man i mean this room in my house right now I'm playing the guitar before y'all called me that's what I'll be trying to do on my time off is write a new record so hopefully I can get it done and then we can record it sometime I don't know when we'll be able to go in the studio because we'll start touring here pretty soon but that's what I'm doing with my time off right now is uh, working on lures I'm I'm writing today and then tomorrow I have to test um, a bunch of prototypes um, yep and then I'll get back writing <laughs> Man. Man, is that is the touring deal like a lot, or is it something that you've gotten used to? I mean, it's kind of similar. Uh, it's probably actually more, but like you look at Lee and a bunch of. I'm sure you've talked to Lee and seen how hard it is on these guys traveling the country in their boats and you know being away from family and stuff like that. But it it's similar. Would you say it's more on uh, for you? Because I'm sure y'all play it like what twenty times many uh, shows as they fish tournaments, you know. Yeah, yeah, we we're on the road a lot more than they are. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, it's just part of it. It's tra- it's harder when you get older and you have kids, man. Yeah, that's probably the hardest thing. You don't like leaving your kids, which is the same for all those cats fishing, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, you kind of get used to it. But it uh, it is what it is. You know, you're still out in it. You're not at home or, or you know with your family all the time. But mm-hmm. hell, the way to make a living. Yeah, it is. That's <laughs> freaking cool, dude. Yeah. <laughs> It's, I can't. I don't know what I'd be if it wasn't if it wasn't for this. Well, that sounds like a life right there. Writing music today and testing lures tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, I don't have a musical bone yeah. in my body, but. <laughs> Not much, man. When you monetize anything, it takes the magic away. Just always remember that. Yeah. Well, yeah. When you monetize. Yeah, I can understand that for sure. Yeah, but it's cool. You know, I can't complain. Well, how many, uh, so y'all got your date set for this year? You got a, how many shows y'all playing this year? I have no idea. I know that the, uh, the calendar's out because they were uh, messaging me about some shows the other day, and I was like, man, I haven't even looked at the calendar, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> like, freaking I'm a, funny, man. I know I start in like February or March. I'll look at it like two days before I go on the road. Oh, my um, God. <laughs> it was like kind of irrelevant, you know what I'm saying? Like it's. You just go and, you, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll figure it out when it's time. It don't matter. My job's not going to change. Yeah, I'm going to do the same thing no matter where you're at. Yeah, so uh, I don't know. I mean, yeah, it'll be a, a full schedule um, like last year and, and the year before. We don't play as many shows now as we did when we were young. Yeah. We're young, man. We're on the road, like, all the time. That's all we did was play shows forever. Um, and we, we still tour a whole lot, but not as much as when we were younger and single and you know, not dads and stuff. Yeah. No, I get that. That's why I was asking. I didn't know if, like, you guys were going to keep putting out music or plan to hang it up or you're always going to do it. 
Um, I'm enjoying the ride, man. I mean, I don't know if I'll be out there like Willie or something when I'm 90. <laughs> yeah. I don't, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm digging it right now. So we're going to keep doing it, uh, as long as we can. You know, you don't, you know, that music thing's here today, gone tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you hang it up on your terms, that's probably a pretty good career. Um, for sure. So you kind of, kind of got to get it while people still dig you because one day they probably won't. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about that, man. I think you guys have, you guys have been around for a while and you're going to stick around. I mean, don't give yeah. it up because I sure enjoy like, it. It's like a thing, like you're cool, and then you get to that age where you're like on stage in like tennis shoes and jeans and stuff like that. <laughs> and then and then you're not cool anymore. And then when you get like real old and look like Santa Claus, you get cool again. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, dang, he's still <laughs> doing it. <laughs> yeah. That's but impressive. Nah, we're, we're keep going right now, man. This is, uh, it, it just, it's got, for us, it's gotten bigger every year. You know what I mean? So it's just every tour's gotten bigger, which is a blessing, and, and the band's still growing. So yeah, I, we're full. I mean, from we're my full. perspective, I, it seems like you guys are bigger than ever. I mean, you know, yeah, for sure, it's been so, wild. That's cool. That's really cool. But no, it's uh, I enjoy the music. I know why it does. And man, we're gonna have to try out some of these uh, some of these lures, especially you get some going. Yeah, man. You ever get some prototypes? You need a uh, need a little feedback. You know. Hey, we're looking for feedback anything man i'm open i'm an open book so. just holler we'll, we'll test it out right there on the water a bunch so. come back to bonita creek hall i know you are too big now but one more <laughs> for old time's sake come back to bonita creek hall i'll tell them boys up there to make it worth it there'll be riots in the streets do <laughs> i don't know if we could play bonita but it would be cool to play somewhere in nacogdoches because yeah. we, we had some good time I mean, some good people down there yeah that's right man yeah. that's right oldest town in Texas, that's us yeah. right there. Hey, we uh, we played our first festival in Nacogdoches, man. We really? were in a suburban. Yeah, we were still touring in a suburban, man. We didn't even have a van. Damn sure didn't have a bus then. Rolled <laughs> up in a suburban. It was called like a something. Party in the Pines or something. You remember that? Uh, yeah, I think that. Something in the Pines. Yeah, no, that's something in the Pines. Yeah, I think I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, man. It was a long time ago. Dude, when was that? I don't know when that was. I don't know. That was probably like oh eight, oh nine. Oh yeah, yeah. That was before me. That was before I was there. Before you and that. Yeah, but I remember hearing about that for sure. I just know that. So, what's some yeah. of your favorite places to play? Uh, Red Rock is number one. Oh, for that's sure. that's a badass venue. Um, I mean, there's a lot of cool places. It's just hard to out. That that's the one that stands out, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's just the coolest venue that I've played. Personally played in America. I've played a lot of um I don't know if there's anywhere that I've ever played that's even close to Red Red Rock. Mm, yeah. That's cool. That's a great answer. That's, that's a really good cool. One. Yeah. That's numero uno for me, man. Yeah. Awesome, dude. Well, you got anything else for this man? Yeah, you you are you just talking to me? Yeah, man. Uh, well, man, I can talk to this dude forever. <laughs> but uh <laughs> But no, man, I just think it's really cool. Um, first of all, thank you for taking the time out of uh, your schedule to talk to us. Just some, uh, just some bass fishing dudes in a East Texas fishing bones in a we freaking are. garage filming a <laughs> no nothing podcast. It uh, says a lot about you, man. We appreciate that, and yeah. uh, oh, yeah. and uh, yeah, man, we just appreciate everything you're doing for. For fishing too, man, it may not seem, you know, like a ton, but it really is, man. It means a lot for an industry that's, I'm sure you know, because you're in the uh, industry with your lures. It's not a very big world. Uh, it seems bigger than what it really yeah. is. Small world, man. And anytime that uh, guys like you, you know, can can get into our industry, man, I think it's much appreciated. I know it is for a guy like me. and uh, For sure. And bring, I, some, bring some influence and a different perspective on things. And, you know, yeah, that's that's cool. Really cool, man, and we yeah. appreciate it. Well, I've been a fan, you know, since I was a little kid, so I've been really enjoying it to uh, become friends with some of the people I have, you know, like KBD and Mark Zona and Davey Hyde and those people, you know. So it's been it's kind of cool, you know. It's cool for me too, you know. Yeah, yeah I bet you. Yeah, that's pretty. That is really cool. Yeah. I didn't think about that. The relationship you made for, with those guys, you know, yeah. it's really cool. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. It's really cool. Yep. 
I think that's it on my end, man. Is that uh, that's all I got, man? I just I appreciate his time, like Wyatt said. Yep, you for know? sure. So I appreciate y'all. All right, man. Well, take care of yourself, and uh, maybe you'll see us in the crowd. Wyatt will take a shirt off or something, and <laughs> throw it at you. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. You have a good one. All right, man. All right, man. Take care. Yeah, that was legit, man. Yeah, dude, I could talk to him forever. He's yeah, he's I, funny. I I could talk to him a lot, a lot about a lot more stuff when the cameras aren't recording. That's for sure. Yeah, I'm sure he's got some stories. Yeah, he got some stories, man. I and look, that's no joke. Talking about the Bonita days, man, it's taking me back. And that's not even that long ago, but it's taking me back. So that's, yeah, those were like the. I'm I'm not just saying this because we had him on the show. That was like the concert, dude. Like when Whiskey Myers came to town, and like I said, no shot they'll they'll ever. Be back because how many does Benita even hold? Oh, like it ain't even an option for them. You know what I mean? Like it, they couldn't come there. If they came there, it'd be like a charity case. <laughs> like something has to be going on. It'd be like VIPs only. Have to Bro, it'd be tickets, yeah, it'd be. They not. probably wouldn't do that. They're not coming back. But I tell you what, they were there and we loved them. And they still, like I said about their music, which is still true right now like, i think there's more people now that listen to it you know i got family in colorado we go visit every year yeah i play them you know like texas country music i listen to is down here and and whiskey myers i mean i've been listening to them for for a while now and uh dude, yeah when they just, hear it they're big fans now bangers dude like, and if you listen sound. to him about how he kind of views everything he's a creative mind and most musicians musicians are especially a guy in, in his position, but you look at how he went about this fishing. Yeah, when he started like and dropping all the tech stuff, I was like, "Dang!" Like so, he's in it, in it. So this isn't. I think you can view that music and this the same way. These these lures, right? Like it wasn't just like, "Hey, I'm gonna get in it just because just I grew dabble. up bass fishing and I want to make something, and put it out there because just to say I did it." Like, no, he's like, "I'm gonna do this, but I'm gonna do it right. I'm gonna take the time." Yeah. And actually do it the way I want to do it and make sure that it's right. And he's done that with all of his products. And you look at their music and he talked about the same way, man. The get... albums versus a one hit. Yeah. Like it was the same way. Like you, you can tell that he's like that. And I think that's really cool, man. And you just him, you know, them being from Texas and like man, it just really is I... a really cool story. I'm really glad we had him on the podcast. This is a really cool story to uh I had no, me and Shane had no idea what to expect. From no. this show, I literally didn't know if he was gonna come never talked to him on the phone before, just text message, dude. Like he could have not known a thing, not like a thing about bass fishing. I had no idea he was this knowledgeable about it. Oh, he's you know? very knowledgeable, very knowledgeable, very very cool, very cool. No, to see. it's cool to see him that involved. Like a, like I was telling him, you know, somebody like him bringing his influence, right, and his leverage, if you will, to make some changes, make new baits. I mean, it's not – if you and I wanted to get in and, you know, make some lures, it would be a little bit harder for us to, you know, for, for the industry to embrace us trying to do something different. Right. You know, so to see somebody like him who's got the got the leverage and the interest and the know-how and mm. clearly the passion, he's – dude, he's, he knows his stuff. Yeah, no, he legitimately so knows it. I'm yeah. excited to see what he comes out with. Yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool, you he, know. He, my ears perked up with a swim bait thing. And we don't put products uh, on this show. If no. you haven't noticed, we haven't pushed. And we're not pushing this product, but look, we had the uh, Cody Cannon on, part owner of Turf yeah, Thumper. This like, is his product, so we had him on, and we got it right here. We'll talk about it, for sure. Uh, but, you know, I'm uh, I'm really happy with this episode, man. I hope y'all really enjoy this one. This was, you know, when we ended the year last year, this is one of those episodes where we're talking about, hey, we're, we're going to try to do something different. We're going to try to bring some Different stuff into the podcast world, yeah. not just necessarily, necessarily negative uh, energy. You know, we're trying to bring some positivity yeah, to some to some some fishing here. Well, man. some different guests too. I mean, like we talked about, and you know, Dion, if you're listening again, yeah, come on, man, man, that's gonna be. I don't. I'm, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that Dion's not gonna be not even a pers- like close as knowledgeable <laughs> as Cody Cannon. <laughs> I can't believe you said that out loud. About fishing. Disrespect Dion like About that. fishing, man. Come on. No, you're you right. You think Dion's got no, a fully I, rigged no, out I'm gonna tell you. I'm going to tell you, there is there's a very small percentage of people who know what he was talking about. Like, No, very knows, small. Like, you got to be in stuff. this sport and, and realize what he's Cody talking about. Cody knows his stuff for sure, man. Yeah. You can tell that, That's not knocking on Dion, but let's be honest. No, Has no, Dion no, got a fully rigged out Phoenix? There's pros. There's Elite Series pros that 
that would have gone right over their head. A hundred percent. Like what? Yeah. Just make the lure and let me throw it. Yeah. You know. Really cool, man. Really cool. No, he's a he's a cool cat for sure. But how long uh, does this one go? We're right at an hour. Perfect. Perfect. Right at an hour. But what about Travis Hunter? We got some. So you guys left. Some of you guys left some comments yeah. about some ideas. I actually did follow up on one of them. It was uh, one of them suggestion, and I can't remember. I apologize. I'll look through the comments, but uh, suggested. Uh, 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 I can't even think of his name. He owns a tackle shop in Alabama or Tennessee. Hey, what? What's his name? He fishes MLF. Michael oh. Neal. I don't even know why. Oh, Michael Neal. Well, of course. We would love to have Michael Neal. Well, he's going to win I like got his 15th AOI. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah, Did you talk to him? No, I hadn't texted him yet. He's going to have like 15 AOIs before he goes. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, he'll be a good one, you yeah. know, to show like the tackle side, which, you know, obviously I was involved with that. And we've had Brian on to talk about, you know, tackle shop, but him being a touring pro and then talking about tackle side, I think he'd be a, be a good guest to have on. So yeah. thank you for that comment. That was a good idea. Travis Hunter. Travis Hunter up. would be a really cool one. Yep. Yeah. I think that's a realistic guy to have on. Yeah, absolutely. I he's believe got so. A big, big following, but uh, I know he's real passionate about fishing. He's got a YouTube channel, so. Uh, we'll try to get him on. Um, who else? Man, we're just going to keep going with the flow. A oh, boy, Cody Cannon said. Let's go with the flow. He said, it's going pretty good. I'm just going to ride it out. Just ride it out. That's the juice, man. It's going all right. We're just going to ride it out. I mean, we're, we did this because we enjoy it. We didn't do it for. No. Like you said, when you monetize it, it loses the magic. Yeah, we, we don't. are definitely not we, monetized. We haven't earned a dime <laughs> on this podcast. <laughs> no, not saying that. I mean, I'd like to earn a little bit for it, but uh, that's not why we got into it at all. Man. No, we do it because it's fun. We enjoy it. We we have these conversations outside of here all the time, so yep. we figured why not record it, talk with some interesting people. You might as well, dude. You didn't ask him if we could put his music in the dang video. I'll text him. It's you ain't got very long to put it in there. Before he comes on, to be honest yeah. with you. He probably thinks I'm an idiot because I said Frogman's about frog fishing. I mean, I mean, I thought you were when you said I it. knew it was about Navy SEALs. I just was <laughs> like, it'd be cool if it was about frog fishing. I'm a bad. Baby, I'm a frog man. <laughs> we didn't, uh, we, we kind of cussed a lot on the episode. We'd be all right. I mean, there, it's been getting, it is what it is, man. That YouTube won't take it down? No, they just won't let kids watch it. Oh, okay. Which I put on there anyway when I upload it, not for kids. Okay. This isn't your daddy's uh, Bass Fish Podcast. No. But anyways, guys, uh, man, I hope y'all liked that episode. I was excited about that one, and it went better than I even thought it was going to. So um, hope y'all enjoyed it. Keep shooting us ideas, man. We're going to keep having people on, and uh, tournament season's come. We're going to do some on-the-water stuff. Going fishing. And uh, me and Shane are fixing to start rolling with this and tournaments, and I couldn't be more excited mm-hmm. about the future. I was pretty down about not going back to the Invitationals or the Opens, but now what I, that I see what's in front of me and Shane, it's probably just what was meant to be, you know. So I'm excited. Hope you all keep tuning in. Till next time, man. Yep. See you all.